Francis here from EMTBR and today I'm going to tell you about 10 tips I learned about how to transport your e-bike, your downhill bike or your heavy commuter bike to the trailhead or destination. So the first tip I have aside from getting a good rack, I'm going to demonstrate to you uh, a couple of, of tray racks, you know, wheel hold tray racks and also some pickup trucks is uh, the first thing you need to know is you need to be deliberate about your your mounting, your bike mounting. You have to know what you're doing. Uh, make sure you you are you have proper footwear. You're on level ground, and I'll show you a couple tricks on on your form and make things lighter. So obviously we're dealing with heavy bikes. This is only a 35 pound bike, but let's say you have a 60 pound bike. These tips will help you out. So the first thing is position your bike, and then hold your rear brake as you're pushing back and there you automatically have a wheelie and you could put your bike on the rack half the half the weight right who doesn't like that and there you're good to go all right boom push you're in same thing with getting it out usually on a on a rack like this rear wheel uh, front wheel first because the rear wheel is more secure and then right here i can just roll it off okay the next thing I'll let you know, pickup trucks are really cool for heavy bikes because there's no wobbling, it's super secure. This is a Gen 2 Tacoma. The, the bed's kind of shallow, so just, just know that it's not as stable as, as like a, a Gen 3. But what you want to do is you want to uh, bend your knees, hold it in the chain stay or the seat stay and the fork and then lock lock your arms so if you're like this with a 50 pound bike it's a tough position like this it's easier you can take a couple steps know where you're going know what angle you're gonna put the handlebar and you're good to go when you have a roof rack or one of those window racks don't do it <laughs> not a good idea all right the next tip i'm going to tell you about is when you have multiple bikes you want to prep the rack and and the bike first before you actually get there so here put the arms first pretty obvious but i can't tell you how often i forget there you're gonna have a, a position for your pedal that's ideal and usually it's it's right here you know right where the other the other the the space between the frame and the the wheel is and then put the dropper post down we have this beautiful gift which is dropper post which allows good riding but also easy access to bike racks so here somehow i got my wheelie right and then boom get the front wheel in get the rear wheel in look at that pedal's already there and here pedal's not quite right Got to make sure it's in the space and then boom, I'm good to go. And make sure you check for interference. If they're getting close, if you get hit a rough road, speed bumps, you're going to scratch each other. If this thing is spinning, if they're too close to each other, your rack, you know, you could hold this together, you know, with a, with a little uh, Velcro. So, you know, prepare that stuff and you'll be worry free. It's for wheel hold racks or the, the one arm racks i do have a yakima stage two rack with with just the one arm and the the rear wheel doesn't have an arm it's just on a on a on a cradle is you can't put the arm here <laughs> i made that mistake because all these uh wheel racks they put the, we put the arm right here so i put the i put the arm right there and cinched it really hard um, but that's the wrong way to do it you have to put the arm right here one inch from the core I learned the lesson. The reason it's there is because when it's here, the bike can move back, move front and back on super bumps. And when it moves back, the arm's gonna fall down and then you're gonna lose the bike. All right. Check your bolts regularly. You know, every three months, every six months, I just did it to mine, everything was loose. <laughs> so this is on a cam system. Make sure you take, check that, uh, you know, the, the rack is gonna get loose. It's just, it's just mileage means vibration and loosening of bolts uh, the other thing is all these bolts here check them out just tension them and if they always get loose put some blue loctite on them 
okay? Um, on my rack, on my 1UP USA rack, one was super loose and one was super tight. And I was like, I, was, I could live with it, but I said, man, it wouldn't be nice if they were all perfect tension, perfect safe tension, so check it. Next tip I have is when you have multiple uh, bikes, heavy bikes on your vehicle, make sure the heaviest bike is closest to the vehicle. Um, so 50, 50, 30, 30, you know, if, even if the, the rack can take it, it's just essential you put the heaviest bikes close to the vehicle. Why? Physics says that leverage increases by a lot when you get away from the car. So if you have a 50 pound bike right here, it's just torquing the tongue weight of your hitch. It's just gonna, it's actually gonna move your car around, you know, if you have a little compact, compact sedan or whatnot. So avoid a lot of heavy bikes, but if you have to, Put, put, the, put the heavier bike closer to the vehicle. If you're having problems, having difficulty lifting the bikes, uh, you, have, you, have an, you have another buddy that joined, he's got an e-bike uh, and, and he's, it's like the third bike, remove the battery. The battery is at least nine pounds to 11 pounds, 11 pounds for my Canyon. So remove that thing. So now instead of a 51 pound bike, you have a 40 pound bike and it's a lot easier uh, on the installation and it's a lot easier on your rack and your vehicle especially on bumpy roads is use a two inch hitch some vehicles only come with an inch and a quarter you can use an adapter inch and a quarter to two inch but remember you're still an inch and a quarter hitch you know so adhere to those limits just because you have two in the end uh, the, doesn't mean you have two basically your weakest link is still inch and a quarter so i would say for e-bikes avoid inch and a quarter at all costs but if that's all you have you know, maybe you just have one bike, two bikes for smooth roads, um, but they're definitely they're not as strong. Both the rack uh, and the hitch vehicle mount are not as strong. So when you're at close to the limits, not a great idea. Uh, make sure you avoid car wash, you know, when you have your bikes, when you have your rack. Most car washes, just they, they just don't like bike racks, you know. Sometimes you can get away with it, but you know, one of those brushes gets tangled, especially the cloth ones, they get tangled with your rack. It will ruin your rack, your vehicle, and then they will charge you for the whole car wash system, which could be like five grand. So avoid that. In your garage too, be very careful. You know, you might, you might, uh, you might forget you have a rack on your vehicle. Uh, in the old days, we used to have roof racks. We used to crash into our garage because the bikes are up there. Now, uh, still avoid that if that's your situation. But uh, really, if you're backing in, just remember if you have a rack or not, uh, often you have to remove it anyway, uh, just to fit it in your garage. And the last piece of advice is make sure you have no contact. You know, any, you know, dropper posts are cool, but make sure the pedals are clear of each other. A lot of my bikes have scratches here because the, uh, the, the, the pedals from another bike contacted them on a long road trip. So the longer the trip, the rougher the trip is the more critical because you know over six hours anything can happen any kind of movement like this with a little bit of contact or pretty soon your paint's gone so uh, keep that in mind and in the in the end i would recommend what you might call this i would recommend pick up tailgate racks if you have very rough roads very heavy bikes it's just a question of getting your leverage uh, and getting it out there but without that i would say you know get some of these good racks a good tray rack with enough capacity for your heavy bike and you in the rougher the road the more off-roading you do this one the, especially the Yakima 70 pounds is the limit but they say if you're going to go off-roading our limit their limit is 40 pounds so that tells you in their testing that uh, the dynamic load of a rough road is really critical uh, it puts so much more pressure on your rack so keep that in mind all right so keep it safe out there and uh, get you get your heavy bikes to the to the trailhead or to the vacation destinations. Thanks for time.